Hello and welcome to today's session of the Kenya Airlift Program GMA training. So I'm Ken Moragori, I'm a verbal trainer with the Kenya Airlift Program. And today we'll be continuing with our lessons on critical reasoning. So more than half of CR questions are conclusion or argument based. So this means that over half of the questions that we'll be handling under critical reasoning, they will have a conclusion or an argument in some form or some way. So in this case, the passage usually contains a conclusion and also has a reasoning and a premise. So as I said last time, a premise is an introduction and then a reasoning is the build up to the conclusion of the reason why this conclusion was made. So following this, today we'll be focusing on strengthening and weakening the argument type of questions. So when dealing with strengthening the argument questions, they require an answer that supports the argument. So what does that mean? It means that whatever answer you choose must be able to make the argument or the conclusion more viable. So it kind of offers a proof or evidence that this conclusion of argument is actually legit. So be careful not to pick answers that weaken the argument because this probably happens when you're trying to read over the answer choices more quickly than you can maybe understand. And some of these answers, they actually look the same but they have opposite meaning. So be careful of answers that we can the argument when you're dealing with strengthen the argument questions. So weakening the argument questions is just opposite of strengthening the argument. So it requires an answer that casts doubt to the argument of conclusion. So the answer should render the argument void or poke holes in its reasoning. So what does this mean? This means that whatever conclusion that you have, any answer that you pick must prove that this argument is not necessarily correct or it may actually be false. So again, as we said, understanding the argument questions, be careful not to pick answers that may strengthen the argument. So what strategies do you use when handling these types of questions? So first of all, you identify the conclusion of argument, and then you identify the reason behind it. And we always use process of elimination. So what does this mean? So once you spot the conclusion, the second part is asking, how did the author come to that conclusion? Or why did the author conclude the way they concluded? So after identifying the reasoning and the conclusion, and uh, remember that understanding this reasoning, you'll also have to understand the premise. So never assume that any part of the passage that you're given is not important. Something may seem unimportant, but actually be very important. So, and then we're using process of eliminate, elimination where we are eliminating all wrong answers until we are only left with one valid choice. And this valid choice must either be strengthening the conclusion for that type of question or weakening the conclusion for the weakening the argument type questions. So what are some of the potential pitfalls that uh, can cause you to miss these types of questions. So number one, and this will actually apply for all CR questions. So if you miss an article, a preposition or an adjective. So an article is A, A, an, B. So as we always say last, uh, we said last time that if you have a solution or 
the solution. So this, they seemingly mean the same, but they do not, they actually have different meanings. So this means that there's more than one and the solution means that this is the only solution. So just be careful of that. So this applies to prepositions and adjectives. So if a question says, say a solution can quickly solve something or completely solve something, just take note of these adjectives. So do not ignore the relevance of any word and how it's used. So make sure that you are asking yourself every time, is this really the wording of the author or have I paraphrased these words to my own understanding? And then that way you build a habit of verifying if you're using your own interpretation of the author's version. Because once now you start using the author's version, you will actually be able to make faster eliminations because you notice the out of scope answers pretty fast. So another pitfall is pre-thinking. So we've said here that sometimes it works. So what is pre-thinking? Pre-thinking is when you read a question. So you have uh, your stimulus and then you read the question, maybe it's asking for you to strengthen the argument. And then now you go back to your stimulus and try to think, how can I strengthen this argument? So once you do that, you may lock your mind to think that that's the only way that this argument can be strengthened. So sometimes it may lead you to pick an answer that is not relevant because the decision is already made. So this means that you overlook some answers that are maybe correct. But since you have a certain notion of what the answer should be, you get uh, this question wrong that way. So always employ pre-thinking with a grain of salt. That means that do not set your mind to pre-thinking as opposed to using process of elimination. So just go over the answers with an open mind. The other pitfall is out of, out of scope answers. These uh, appears when you import outside knowledge into critical reasoning. So maybe you work, say, as a driver somewhere, and then we have a question about tracking. So of course, you know, a lot about the roads, about the driving. And then you import that outside knowledge into answering this question. You'll always find some of those, those answer choices that try to incorporate this outside knowledge. And once you incorporate that outside knowledge, because this knowledge is both outside the stimulus and probably isn't related to the question, so you find yourself that you may miss some of these questions because you've chosen out of scope answers. Again, do not fall in love with an answer choice. So make sure that you do not pick a, an answer choice just because you feel it's the right thing. Sometimes these questions, they can appeal even to our human nature, but as long as it doesn't answer the question or doesn't help you answer exactly what you're being asked, just overlook it. So another potential pitfall is extreme language. So we said this is a red flag, but it's not always wrong. So mostly when you see extreme language, it's uh, more, more often than not, a uh, wrong choice, but sometimes these extreme language choices are actually the correct choices. So do not just eliminate because it's extreme language, but if you find an answer choice that has extreme language, just refer back to the passage to ensure that the extreme language is called for, because the passage may actually 
uh, validate this extreme language. So here are some of those markers of extreme language. So must not or never, always impossible. So as we said, they just indicate either 100% chance or 0% chance. So just make sure you notice um, these markers. So with that being said, we'll look over an example. And I actually chose an example that is neither strictly strengthening the argument or weakening the argument. Because in as much as we are classifying these questions, you do not need to stress over what type of question this is. Because once you start, some, some actually, some questions, they do not fall in this or the other category. And you'll see what I'm talking about uh, as we do this example. So as usual, just pause the video, try the example on your own, and then I'll pause the video and then we'll talk about it. You're watching Success with Bob Mwiti Show presented to you by AppStack America. AppStack America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.appstackamerica.com. AppStack America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential within you. So our question reads, the pharmaceutical industry argues that because new drugs will not be developed unless heavy development costs can be recouped in later sales, the current 20 years of protection provided by patents should be extended in the case of newly developed drugs. However, in other industries, new product development continues despite high development costs, a fact that indicates that the extension is unnecessary. So which of the following, if true, most strongly supports the pharmaceutical industry's argument against the challenge made above? Okay, so here we have, so the pharmaceutical industry's argument, which is uh, the current 20 years of protection provided by patents should be extended in the case of newly developed drugs. So extend protection to more than 20 years. So as we said, ask yourself why. So why? Because new drugs will not be developed unless heavy development costs can be recouped in later years. So, so that you can recoup cost of high development. And then we have the challenge. So what's the challenge made is that in other industries, new product development continues despite high development cost, a fact that indicates that the extension is necessary. So challenge. extension um, necessary. So why? Because other industries, in other industries, new product development continues despite high development costs. So please note that I'm just writing this down for the sake of easy understanding. But during the exam, you do not have to write this much. So just write or try to summarize, but be careful when summarizing, not to overlook important things. So other industries. Uh, continue. with uh, 
development despite high costs. So which one of the following if true most strongly supports? So this is one marker for strengthening the argument. So what are we strengthening? The pharmaceutical industry's argument. And then here now is the caveat against the challenge made above. So we have a challenge. So whatever answer that you pick should strengthen the pharmaceutical industry's view. But because we want to strengthen it against this challenge, it should weaken this challenge. So please read the question carefully, because if you maybe read just the first part, which of the following if true most strongly supports the pharmaceutical industry's argument, you would miss the second part, which will probably be critical in solving this question. So this is an example of a question which has both, both strengthening and weakening in the same question. So going over our answer choices, so A, no industries other than the pharmaceutical industry have asked for an extension of the 20 year limit on patent protection. So remember that this challenge says that extension is unnecessary because other industries still continue with product development despite high development cost. And then here we are saying that no other industries other than the pharmaceutical industry have asked for an extension of the 20 year limit on patent protection. So the question is just because they have not asked for the extension, does it mean, does it or is it necessarily true that they do not need an extension? So just because you don't ask for something doesn't mean you do not need it. So unless this option was exclusively saying that other industries do not need the extension, even if they haven't asked for that extension, that would somehow now be able to weaken this challenge. So for that reason, we can eliminate answer choice A. B, clinical trials of new drugs, which occur after the patent is granted and before the new drug can be marketed, often now take as long as 10 years to complete. So this is another example of uh, an answer choice that really doesn't seem relevant at first glance. But if you think about it, so we have these trials, so there's new drugs and Remember, this is, this is talking about new drugs. So new drugs, the trials, they occur after the patent is granted. So not that it's after. So the 20 year protection countdown has begun and before the new drug can be marketed. So remember that uh, after the drug is marketed is when it can be sold. So this period uh, between the patent being granted and when the drug is marketed, because, of, because it's now in trials, it can take as long as 10 years to complete. So this means that of, uh, of these 20 years that are given so that the industries can recoup their costs, 10 years go to trials. So technically these, these companies just have 10 years to sell. So this means that actually they may need this extension to be granted. So this can actually strengthen the pharmaceutical industry's view and they can weaken this challenge because it now shows the need for this extension because remember the conclusion here is extension is unnecessary. So we can keep B. So we go on to see, there are several industries in which the ratio of research and development costs to revenues is higher than it is in the pharmaceutical industry. So what C is saying is that 
if you compare research and uh, development costs, so the costs versus revenue, uh, pharmaceutical industries actually have higher revenues or lower costs than some of the industries. So these several industries. So if this is the case, this means that uh, there is probably no need for this extension because they are actually getting more revenues than the other industries. And in this case, we are assuming that these industries do not, uh, are not asking for this extension. So that means that C is actually doing the opposite. It's weakening the pharmaceutical industry stand and strengthening the challenge. So this is one of those that is doing the opposite of what you want. So we can eliminate C. So D, an existing patent for a drug does not legally prevent pharmaceutical companies from bringing to market alternative drugs provided they are sufficiently dissimilar to the patented drugs. So in short, this option says that even if you have a patent, it doesn't stop other manufacturers from bringing to market an alternative drug. So what happens when you bring an alternative drug means that the demand for your drug goes down. If demand goes down, sales go down. So what this means is the patents are ineffective. And if the patents themselves are ineffective, is there really a need to extend the length in which this patent protection is in effect? There's actually no need. So this again does the opposite of what you want. So we can eliminate it. And then E, much recent industry innovation has occurred in products, for example, in the computer and electronic industries for which patent protection is often very ineffective. So notice that this talks about products, but not drugs. It says uh, the computer and electronic industries. But one thing we have to note, just because these products for the these products the patent protection is ineffective doesn't mean that it's necessarily ineffective for drugs so this is one of those answers that are out of scope it doesn't necessarily mean that if something happens to a then it must also happen to b so for that reason we can simply eliminate a and we have our answer as B. So here's our answer. So the summary of what we have said today is always make sure that you use the author's words and not your words. So no paraphrasing. So number two, rethinking is sometimes dangerous. So do not make a habit of rethinking. Uh, as a, an, an alternative, just use process of elimination. And do not just assume an answer is wrong, just because at first glance it doesn't look important. And then number three, careful of out of scope. And then careful of reversals. So reversals are those that uh, result in an opposite effect. So you want to strengthen, but the answer choice weakens. So be careful of that. So that was our lesson today. Uh, if you want to experience more of this, you can join our Kenya Relief Training Program and 
you'll get all this and much more. So bye guys, see you in the next lesson. Thank you.